Welcome to the last talk of the day. This is the, uh, the Barton Grifter Show. Uh, you all know about the business hall and all that, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you about the, the business hall and the arsenal and all that. You already know that. So without further ado, Barton Grifter. Yes. Welcome. Adore Thank us. You. Does this work? It was work. So uh, we're Barton Grifter. So who the hell are we? Um, if you've been to a, uh, a knock debrief before, previous Black Hats, then, um, then you know what you're in for. If this is your first one, we apologize up front. You will learn nothing. <laughs> um, Buckle up. Yeah, right? I mean. Buckle up. It's true. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's me. I'm Grifter. That handsome guy over there. <laughs> um, I have been doing all the on-site technical operations for Black Hat for the last 17 years. Um, this is actually my 50th Black Hat, so that counts, you know, the Asia show, Europe shows, uh, the federal shows we used to do, and we used to do a window show in Seattle, for those of you who are old like me. Um, so yeah, 50 shows. And uh, that requires setting up a network. Uh, by day, um, I'm a threat hunter for RSA. Um, by night, I do this, um, as well as uh, DEF CON goon. I run contests and events for DEF CON. Been doing that for 18 years. I speak all over the place for some reason. Um, and I've written some books and stuff. It's supposed to make you want to listen, but you're already here, so fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> You usually know who this guy is anyway. So uh, I'm Bart, and I usually just say I'm not as uh, pretty or known as Grifter, but here we are. So uh, I've been doing this now about 12 years, so rode his coattails all the way here. Um, this is the 12th year, not as many uh, shows as Grifter. Uh, by day, I'm a security consultant with Optiv um, and do all the other things as well. We're pretty involved, obviously. So Cool. Uh, but we don't do it by ourselves. This is the knock team. So yes, they're cheer for them more. What a handsome bunch! Um, we have uh, Marissa in the center. Is the knock queen? She uh, is responsible for all knock operations at uh, UBM slash now Informa. So she's responsible for us. <laughs> which is not easy. Yeah, uh, but we, um, we have Bart and myself, and then we uh, have Steve M.F. Fink, who's up here in the front. Steve, just wave to the crowd, Steve. So <laughs> Steve's like our chief architect. Uh, basically, the three of us are who decides what ends up going in the NOC, uh, but there are other folks in there as well. So we have 15 of our friends that we take with us. Uh, they take vacation, they come, they hang out with us and try to do something cool, uh, look at weird traffic, and just generally uh, have a good time at Black Hat. They are security professionals uh, from analyst level all the way up to VPs in their organizations, and, and they're here just to, to chill, basically. Uh, we also have not partners, which we'll get into uh, in a moment, but each of those partners normally sends between two to four people. Those Two to four people will often rotate in shifts so that there's always representation there. So, speaking of partners. Yay! So you guys have seen a lot of these names before. Um, we've, we've had a, a nice tight crew that we've been running with the partners here for a while. Um, Palo Alto RSA, Cisco, Centrelink, Ruckus, and Gigamon. We'll get into architecture here in a minute. Uh, but we always kind of want to uh, reiterate that these are partners. Uh, they're not sponsors. They haven't paid to be in the knock with us. It's not anything that um, whoever pays the most money gets to be in the knock. Uh, we've made a very conscious effort and chose these uh, these partners, uh, the equipment that they bring, and, and the talent that they bring as well. So uh, they're they're also a part of the family at this point. Yeah. So just a little history for those who don't know. Um, when initially when I started doing the network at Black Hat, we did it with a Cisco 2600 router, a couple of Netgear switches, and those uh, Cisco APs that you would put the Orinoco gold cards in and like tape an antenna to a wall. Right. We used to do it like that. Then you know we started uh, having 
you know, additional needs and scale. We, the first show I did, a US show, was 1,500 people. Um, we're, we'll be over 20,000 for Black Hat for this show. So some growth. So we had a scale issue, right? Um, because we started doing things as it grew with all roll your own open source. Um, we had SoCris boxes running OpenBSD and we did everything with PF or our own customer in scripts to have it call home and uh, we'd have configuration parties in somebody on the NOC team's living room uh, for weeks leading up to the show. And at one point, Bar and I sat next to each other at a US show and said, man, this is insane. Like, I wonder if we can get like one of these vendors to give us gear. And so we're like, oh, let's go down to the expo hall and ask and we'll say like, hey, if you give us some gear, we'll say this is what the Black Hat Knock chooses for the knock, right? That, that sounds like a good trade, a million dollars worth of equipment for some like, hey, look what, we use this. I don't know. A lot of self-importance in that <laughs> like thing, right? Um, but we took our egos and we went downstairs and into the expo floor and walked up to one of the vendors that we were interested in partnering with and we said, hey, hi, we're the guys who run the knock. We were curious if you would be interested and they were like, yes. Whatever it is, yes. yes. And I looked at Bart and he looked at me and we were like, <laughs> oh, let's go shopping. <laughs> And so that's what we did. We walked around the expo floor going, I'll have some of that, and I'll have some of that. And what you got over there, sprinkle a little <laughs> bit on top of that. I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Um, and everybody was super gracious. They were just like, yes, absolutely. What do you need? Uh, you know, here's more, more, more. Um, and we've whittled things down and figured out exactly what works for the knock. And we've had to change certain partners or different things, again, as we scaled or needs change. But we think um, we have a pretty good mix Right now, we've been working with these partners for a few years, and uh, and it's going well. So don't screw it up, guys. No, just um, <laughs> I kid. No, serious. A little bit. Did you see the expo floor? I will pick whoever I want. <laughs> um, no. So uh, so yeah. So it's a good mix, and everybody works really well together. So it's been good. Um, I think what. We, yeah, I won't, I won't get into it. I was going to tell a story, and that's not <laughs> no, fair. That's not a good It's idea. not fair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the architecture uh, has, has always kind of kept a, a simple theme with us, and that is keep it simple. So the whole KISS theme, keep it simple, stupid, is, is really what we've tried to live uh, the policy here when, when we build the networks for these shows. So um, one of the big things that we've been pushing that those of you in trainings may have noticed more than others that just come to briefings uh, is that we're trying to not wire things and there's a big piece of this that, that has really come to this. But we'll dig through this a little bit really quick. Uh, so Palo Alto brought us a pair of 5260s uh, running the, the core and the WAN uh, of the uh, 10 gig circuits, the two 10 gig circuits we have from CenturyLink. So 20 gigs of bandwidth. You guys enjoyed it. Um, Panorama was with Palo Alto. Um, Gigamon brings their GigaView that they use to, uh, we use that to tap the traffic and provide it to our tools, including RSA Net Witness. RSA also brings uh, ECAT and Identity Force throughout the infrastructure. Uh, Ruckus provides their ICX switching throughout the um, core switching as well as all the distribution switches. We replace uh, all of Mandalay Bay's switching and basically just use the cables in the wall. Uh, and then the R600s, and I believe we had some R710s. I don't see Mo, just to give me the nod, but um, access points. So uh, one quick little thing that I like to talk about as we get into this, uh, again, about the wired steps. We had 10,000-ish students for training this year, uh, and we had one room that had uh, wired connections for students. Uh, and as far as we were aware, it went very, very smooth. So hopefully you guys will continue to see um, growth there and, oh. and basically just wireless. That, that's an important thing to say too. Um, we don't use any of Mandalay's infrastructure, right? Um, we come in early, we replace all the switches, all the routers, all the firewalls, everything. Every access point um, is ours or our partners, right? It, it belongs to the NOC. Um, we do that because it allows us the ability, well, we're control freaks. Um, a little bit. But it allows us the ability to have that level of control and also 
should we see something that is genuinely bad, we have the option to do mitigation versus just going, well, that that's sucks. bad. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so we replace everything. Um, the only thing that we use for Mandalay is the wires in the wall. And so of the 88 different classes that, um, that happened this year, there we, ha we had one issue where the class, they didn't actually go hard down, but something weird was happening toward the end of one of the training days. And when we chased it down, it literally was the freaking wire in the wall. <laughs> like, and I'm like, all right, what do you do? What do you gotta do, you know? <laughs> like, so the last point of failure, the only one we can't control, and it freaking failed, but only for one class. So we'll take those numbers for sure. So there's Good. that. So Bart just um, oh. just said this all ah. to you, and I had it all in the next slide. But I wanted to see how much he could remember. <laughs> he did fairly well. Like if you're watching this on YouTube later, you can roll it back and see how he did. Um, so so yeah. So this is all the gear. So um, we bring a lot of stuff. It is it is pallets worth of gear that all get rolled in and um, and unpacked. It's a uh, it's quite the undertaking. But in the end. Uh, this is what we found works for us. He mentioned the two 10 gig circuits from CenturyLink. We, we used to have one, uh, two 1 gig circuits, uh, still Denver and Sunnyvale, but we started you know, maxing those out. We jumped to the 10 gig circuits last year and you guys used probably uh, like less than 30% of that available it bandwidth. And I think- Spiked at like 13 gigs. Yeah, it, there was a there was a couple of larger spikes, but overall, I think it was um, pretty. Low. We still only used about forty percent, I think, this year as far as what what we could do. Um, someone in one of the classes discovered that um, that there was a lot of <laughs> options, um, whatever. They just uh, they fired up mass scan and were like the entire internet, <laughs> um, and we saw it because of one of the dashboards that we have. It was just like. Wah! And so because of the way that we lay out the classrooms and, and the subnets, we know what room the, the individuals are in because, you know, so She's we, we the trotted down there and we're like, okay, we don't know exactly where you're sitting, right? We just shut off the lights and the guy whose nick was glowing, that was the guy. <laughs> right? So, you know, we were, like, we're like, hey, man, that's cool. Usually you don't off. even have to do that. We walk in the door and the guy that's messing up is always the... Yeah. <laughs> He's the one that looks. Yeah, a room of 60 people and there's one dude who turns around and goes, tap, tap. Right. And you're like, you should stop. I see you. I just need you to know. Um, so yeah, so I mentioned the dashboards and one of the things, one of the ways that we do see it is, uh, is OIP. OIP is where we uh, get our initial visual indication of what's going on on the network. Uh, green is TCP, red is UDP, and white is ICMP. You can see there are larger uh, or thicker bars there. I'm not going to have it repeat, but um, we'll save that for the fun ones. <laughs> um, but you'll see some of them are thicker. That's just an increase in the amount of traffic, right? So if we see those get larger and larger, like they're, we're like, what? That's interesting what's going on there. Um, we can take the IP address or host. We uh, run over to RSA and NetWitness and we're like, hey, will you just take a look and see what's going on there? And it's like, oh, it's fine. Or, you know, they're dosing the hell out of something. So um, happens all the time. The, the other dashboards on the side are, um, are just intelligence, basically, like uh, some different stats on different things that we keep on the boards inside the knot. You could actually walk in if you didn't walk into the knock. You could walk in. You just couldn't go past the glass. Like Alan, the security guard, would hit you with his <laughs> elbow, and you would immediately regret it. Um, he got very aggressive, and I'll share why in a second. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah. So that all that information, all those dashboards were act. They're actually real. Like we use the data that are on the dashboards. Um, they're, they tell us things like, uh, you know, on the left there is our, you know, automation piece or, and we're aggregating or orchestration, we're aggregating data about incidents from all of the different partners and pulling it under one incident. So when something happens, we have all the data from all different devices pulled into one place. Even as much as, as I mentioned, 
where we know what room you're in, we can have the floor plan show us like it's in this room. So we don't even have to think about it. We're like, go left and then go down two doors. <laughs> like it's right there. GPS. And when it comes to not thinking, that's us. Um, <laughs> On, on the right here is all of the uh, the core infrastructure or the wireless, so if a switch goes inactive or whatever, it turns red, we're like, ah, and we go running off and do something uh, about it. So I mentioned um, the security, making sure you didn't go past the glass, and, and so we always have like a hired security guard that just makes sure things are authorized people are, are only going into the knock. But this year, a trainer asked us, <laughs> Um, Snow, if you're familiar with Snow, she has a, a it's an engagement. It was full, a true engagement. full scope uh, social engineering class. And she said, hey, can I put something in the knock and then see if anybody can get it? And I was like, what? <laughs> and she's like, I just, you know, like, we'll put some type of object in there, a trophy of some kind, and if they can get past, like, security or your guys or whatever, and they get it, then, you know, they, like, they get kudos in the class. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> I mean, what's security? Tell me um, our bad ideas. So, yeah, so we, uh, we had an actual document that, you know, was the get out of jail free card with all the information, Bart, myself, Snow signed it, you know, they, so they had it on them should they get tackled or elbowed in the face by Alan. Um, it happens. Um, red teamers, no, you've been thrown to the ground before. <laughs> um, and so uh, they, they were then given 24 hours to go ahead and try to get in. Within five minutes <laughs> of, of the 24 hours given, so it was from the time the class broke on one day until the end of the day the next day, uh, they were given a picture of a, a clipboard with a folder on it and it said, grifters, don't touch. And so they were sent this picture in email. One of the guys walked in with the picture on his phone, showed the security guard, said, Grifter said I should come pick this up. And he was like, uh, oh, it's that. It's right there. And he walked in and picked it up and walked out. <laughs> right? Right? And I, like, I turned and I could see him walking out. And I was like, Oh no. <laughs> so I lean over to see where the clipboard was sitting because it was just inside the knock on the table next to Lyle, uh, the knock mascot. And, uh, and it was gone. And I was just like, damn it. And someone was like, what? And I was like, we just got owned. <laughs> and then the security guard was like, oh no, what, what? And I, I was like, we just, yes, not Alan. This one was not Alan. The security <laughs> guard who was at the door was like, not that he was replaced or we didn't kill him or like have him yeah. drive. But he panicked and was like, I can get my supervisor. We'll write up a thing. We'll do it. And I was like, oh, chill. This is what we do. Like, this is just us having fun. <laughs> um, so... So yeah, so I was like, damn, but now the security guards were onto it, right? So they were really checking everybody as they came in. Um, let me see, where is my, my knock badge? You got it. There we go. So everybody at Black Hat was wearing these, these little badges, right? Um, and we were like, oh, that's cute. It has my picture on it and like a Black Hat logo. That's not hard to duplicate. Um, but sure, we'll wear it because you told us to. <laughs> But the, the class figured that out really quickly, too. There were some really basic things to put on here, so they were like, we'll make our own. And so two guys came strutting into the knock, now showing their badge to the alert, more alert, security guard. Um, and they didn't know where the trophy was. <laughs> They'd done no recon, so they just got in, and then they were standing in the middle of the knock like... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they were. <laughs> um, have you seen a clipboard? Where? And we're like, who the hell are you? You know? And they're, we were looking for the clipboard. And we're like, all right, you know, like, let me see your badge. And one of the guys like picks up his badge, and they had only put the picture on one side. So then Fink was like, boop, boop. <laughs> Nice try, try again, and off they went. But yeah, so that's what repeatedly happened for the next 24 hours. 32 students kept trying to get into the knock. 
the security guards at the knock were losing their freaking minds. They were just like, like I walked in one morning and I'm walking in, I've got the event management, you know, magnet one on, I've got this on. The guy has seen me for the last four days. He says, hi, grifter. Where's your badge? And then he grabs my badge (laughs) and hits it with a UV light because it actually, there's a, a little watermark on here that glows under a black light. And so then he was like, (laughs) Okay. <laughs> Lesson learned, right? But, I mean, it was cool because uh, <laughs> apparently we had poor security and it got better. So, yay, it, free It pen worked test. out. It worked yeah, out. In the long Snow time. actually sent us a, a pen test report and, um, and then she said, you'll get my bill later. <laughs> she was like, 32 people times this much an hour. But I was like, whoa! <laughs> anyway... Let's talk about some stats. DNS. I'm going to get into the fun stuff now. So uh, DNS has grown every year, uh, uh, quite a bit more last year than the, the year prior. But again, last year was the first year that we had the two 10 gig circuits. So 10x bandwidth, there was definitely more bandwidth, or, or excuse me, more DNS. So 2017, 21 million requests up to almost 40 million by the end of last year. And then uh, we just pulled those stats in about 49 million. The interesting thing, and we put the graph up here, and we always talk about it, but, uh, well, A, I mean, look at the training days. You can see exactly when lunch is. And then all those spikes are usually the fun stuff getting downloaded right after lunch. But look at the different peaks versus uh, briefings. So uh, we have less people here for trainings, uh, but they're almost forced to use the network at that point, obviously, to do labs and stuff. Uh, but then all you other guys get here and you're like, there's no way in hell. <laughs> so yeah. uh, always interesting to look at that. There's DNS for the year. So uh, nearly 50 million DNS requests. Yeah, those lower bumps are the not a chance. Like, yeah, so <laughs> nope. Um, so we always look at encrypted versus unencrypted traffic or the type of encrypted traffic that we're seeing. Um, you can see there, I, I guess I will say, I don't have the pie charts like we did last year or whatever, but I did look at these numbers and some other stuff to try to infer essentially what the amount of encrypted traffic was. Last year, we saw it was roughly 70%. It looks like the same this year. So for several years before that, it was about 5% more encrypted traffic year over year. Um, but it looks like we're, we're about in the same spot we were last year, if not a hair better. Um, but yeah, we're looking one of the One of the more interesting things about encrypted and unencrypted traffic is that we compare it not necessarily year to year, but show to show. So yeah. region to region is very intriguing to us. Uh, Asia is almost... It's always the highest amount of encrypted traffic in the 90 percentile, basically, of, of traffic that's encrypted, I think, 90th, somewhere in there, 90 yeah, percent. 90 plus. And then what's, what's Europe again? Uh, Europe ends up being about the same, about the same as the U.S. So. So, so it's interesting just how that goes. And we always talk about it, obviously, and, you know, protect yourself or security practitioners, but it's, but it's definitely intriguing to see how this changes year to year and even region to region. Yeah, I did talk to a couple local guys at the Asia show this year to say like, hey, you know, we noticed you guys encrypt almost all of your traffic. Like, like why is that? Is there just better education here or whatever? And he was like, no, we just inherently don't trust our government. I was like, why are we trusting our government? <laughs> Only 70%. <laughs> There's like 30% of us trust our government. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so you can see a lot of uh, TLS 1, 1.2, and then there's like a little smattering in there of 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 1.0, and then some SSL 3. I'm just hoping those are labs. I'm hoping they're labs. Ish. <laughs> um, so these are our stats um, around malware. You can see that we, uh, we flag a lot of things, right? Uh, if we see something interesting or it gets a high risk score from, from RSA NetWitness, we'll feed it into Cisco's threat grid. They detonate it in their sandbox. We see how it functions. Or if there are just file types that we're interested in, like is there things embedded in PDFs, that kind of thing, or just executables, DLLs, that kind of stuff, we'll just pump it into threat grid and see what it does. Um, so you can see that there were uh, a total of... Um, nearly 85,000 events, so something that made us go, take a look. Um, and then in, in total, just, just above 4,000 uh, files processed. There's a lot of malware. I don't know if you guys know that, um, but there is. Uh, you guys like keep tiny little zoos on your <laughs> laptops and just fire them at different <laughs> things. It's, uh, it's great. 
Um, we'll get into a specific example of that uh, here in a minute. You gotta watch the GIF first, that's the best part. But, and then it doesn't happen. Go ahead. Just keep waiting. So uh, basically the evolution of the knock, we talk about it a little bit every year, and Grifter uh, mentioned beginning today a little bit about how uh, it, it's grown, obviously, from when he started with 1,500 people to near 20,000 now. Um, it, it's obviously changed quite a bit from, from having to do the open source stuff and, and trying to build that reliability and things into that that we didn't have before. Um, the evolution has really come uh, I wouldn't say full circle because it's always going to be changing, uh, but basically between our guys and our team uh, and the partners, uh, we've, we've gotten through and, and as we talked about a little bit with the uh, trainings and wireless, the stability of that has really come a long way and, and we can offer that and be confident that, that you guys as attendees will be uh, stable and secure as well. So as we go through this, everything here obviously was, was very purposeful um, and, and obviously had an intent of what we were trying to provide. Uh, getting through the stability and security are obviously always changing. Things are always changing. Products are changing. Attacks are changing, et cetera. So that's always kind of evolving. Segmentation, obviously that's a big deal and where that changes between classrooms, the type of classrooms we have as we kind of bleed some of the other events into each other throughout the days. Uh, that changes for us quite a bit. Uh, but honestly, I think one of the biggest things that we've really benefited from is threat hunting with RSA in the, in the NOC and basically them digging through all that data that we have as opposed to just having it and saying this is amazing data, we can actually find interesting stuff and find things to be concerned about. Um, yeah, uh, the, and the segmentation about. piece was uh, was born of like years ago. Uh, at this point, it feels like many years ago at um, at Caesars. Like mostly, the network was flat, right? We didn't do a lot of segmentation until the training classes. The numbers of training classes started to grow. We had uh, one class that was an offensive class, and they like looked over at the class that was like. Um, you know, human factors in managing security <laughs> professionals or whatever, and they were like... And you put them in rooms yeah. next to each other. And they just, like, destroyed this class. And we're like, they're not your lab, guys. You can't do that. And they're like, well, we didn't leave the network. And we're like, ah, segmentation. Um, and then, you know, we, we decided, okay, well, let's take a look at the traffic. What's happening? What can we find uh, that's interesting on here? And that's when we decided to bring in the hunting piece. And the hunting portion is provided uh, by RSA, by NetWitness. Um, the sandboxing, again, or uh, Cisco threat grid or glove box. Uh, to be able to interact with the malware that we see and see what it does and hopefully learn something from it. Um, we decided endpoint would be nice to have on all the registration machines or any like publicly facing machine that was interacted with by you. <laughs> um, you people. So we just wanted to see what was going on there. Um, and then with all of those pieces in place, uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's the hot thing, kids. If you were on the expo floor, automation, 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 right? So speaking of automation, so, so this is one of our uh, bigger projects that took a, a few shows, and that's another thing to kind of reiterate. We, we, we certainly do work on some of the regional shows, trying to get things perfected to use here at the U.S. show, obviously at scale. Um, but basically, uh, the automation, and we'll get into how this works in just a second. Uh, one of the big things that we did, and we actually took a survey offhand last year asking if you guys wanted to see and be notified if we saw clear text passwords, crypto mining, or uh, C2 from your machines. Uh, so basically that was implemented. Hopefully you didn't have to see one of those pop-ups. Basically it's a captive portal that's provided by uh, Palo Alto once you're added into a uh, user group. Uh, but basically that's uh, one of the biggest issues that that brought, uh, or that, that brought that forward was uh, we can walk into a training room, and again, we know where you are at that point. We can walk in and find out who it is when he swings around when we open the door. But during briefings when everybody's just on wireless, we have a general idea, obviously, based off of access points. We wanted to be able to provide this information to you guys uh, without having to tap your shoulder in the hallway. So yeah. hopefully you didn't see it, but if you did, hopefully it's also helpful. So you can see the screenshots here are from Europe 2018. That's the first place we actually rolled it out. So we rolled out the, the notifications. Um, you know, to Bart's point, it's better for you to get that on your phone than for us to like step into like the black hat store and be like, Mac address, whatever, are you here? <laughs> you know, and then be like, you have crypto mining. Uh, but 
but yeah, we're we're just trying to inform you, you know, and hopefully, and and I mean, I think it's work. We've had people respond. We get emails back. They say like, what did you see? We've had people come back to the knock. We show them the traffic that we saw that was malicious. Told people their passwords when they don't believe us. Yeah, clear text account credentials. That's always fun because they're like, no, I'm not doing that, and we're like, here is your password. <laughs> they're like, I am doing that. <laughs> So, so yeah, so this is nice because as we see things, we can just roll it out. The person is immediately informed that there's something amiss and, and they can take some kind of action. Um, so, so the way that it works is when we see something, um, we're identifying it through NetWitness, so through the full packet capture, uh, you know, and then we work with Palo Alto to help like enrich that uh, data, give us more context around it, what's actually happening there. Um, if it, it does in fact look like it's bad, uh, it goes to the uh, orchestration or automation piece. Um, at that point, we have a check in there where uh, Bart and myself get an email that says, we've detected this on this device, would you like to send them an email letting them know, or a, or a captive portal pop-up or whatever, a message letting them know, and we say yes or no. Um, that's just there because, one, it's new, and we don't want it to be something where it's just like, oh, this piece decided, and it's in its automation to flag everybody at the conference and send them an email saying that they have malware, and then we're lynched in the knock. Um, so, lock the doors! <laughs> lock the doors, Alan! <laughs> um, so we talked about that a little bit, uh, the, you know, what's going on there. We're taking something from NetWitness, we're passing it uh, to, to Palo Alto, they're enriching the data, it gets passed to uh, the back end for automation is Demisto, and so um, it gets passed to the Demisto piece and then that goes out. Um, so you can see this is essentially how data flows around the knock for one of those um, incidents. There is an um, uh, immense amount of, of collaboration between all the partners. It's been really cool to watch over the years that as they've sat next to each other, they like lean over and they're like, is that what we send you? That's what our data looks like when you talk to us? That's terrible. We're, it's, we'll fix that, you know? And then they go back and actually, normally by the next show, we have something cleaner, right? They're actually working together to make things better, which is really, really nice uh, to see. It's been amazing, and then, yeah, it's, it's more than super me. good. Oh, so we're gonna give you a couple of stories now, so it's story time. We're only gonna do a few, and then we're gonna roll into questions, and you can either get the hell out of here and go to DEF CON or something, or you can stick around while we ramble some more. So, um, so I just called this slide security or something like it. We, I'm uh, just gonna, we call everybody else out, so we just kinda wanted to. Yeah, we call everybody out whenever it does. We put funny things up on a slide and all that kind of stuff. So I guess it's our turn. <laughs> um, so we hired a, a, like a private security company, right, to help take care of security or try to increase it around. That's why he was willing to lay you out this year to that old story there. Yeah. Paid, so. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like, but you know, there were guys with like earpieces walking around. <laughs> it was adorable. <laughs> um, and so like the, the main dude was sent out the entire security plan for Black Hat with pictures of what the badges looked like and the staff shirts and what you would do if this and this happened and all that stuff, all which in is, the clear. Which is totally okay if he sends it to his people, but he did it on the Black Hat Network. Yeah, he did it on the yeah. Wi-Fi yeah. in the clear. And we're like, uh-oh. <laughs> dude, what are you doing? <laughs> what, what are you doing, dude? Um, what I thought was funny is in that plan, you will, you will find this quote. They hack anything and everything, <laughs> not maliciously, but for the fun of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. That's hackers. Um, it was great. Yeah, we liked that though. We're like, <sighs> guys. <laughs> this is, this is, we talked about it, and again, a big, big piece of this had to do with uh, the bandwidth, people starting to bang on things, but uh, in particular this year, we had a training room that all of a sudden we saw them doing some recon on a law enforcement website. <laughs> and then trying to exploit it. <laughs> and I was like, the cops? <laughs> That's what you thought you should do with your new skill set? You were like, where? 
where could I try this? Not the lab environment created in this class, not any other lab environment in this giant conference of awesomeness, the cops. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I was, I'm looking And then the, trying to exploit it, SQL oh injection, non-encoded, so cat loud. It was so the loud. They were very bad at it. They were <laughs> so bad. I was like, be glad you learned here. You'd no never do way. that again. <laughs> oh, it was bad. So, um, so yeah, so again, we know where you are. Uh, we went into the class, we let the instructor know. The instructors happened to that class, they provided laptops, and they knew where every machine where the Mac was. Address. They were like, oh, that's that guy. He's three rows back, two seats over. He's sitting next to his boss. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, all right, well, be cool. <laughs> but tell him to stop, right? Um, and again, sometimes we just have to, we will literally open the door, lean in, and be like, stop! Guys, it's still illegal from Black Hat. <laughs> And it's like, and then it stops, right? So, yeah, we had we had a number of those. There were there were there were quite a few this year. So I mean, I've got a new great. Batch. I'm glad everybody's learning. Just try to <laughs> rein in the excitement. <laughs> so, uh, an interesting thing about airlines is that you need not very much information to uh, go change a flight. Um, There's there it is. No, yeah, it's There's redacted. enough information in that email to log into Southwest and change this person's flight. Oh, I didn't. Uh, I used the one that didn't have it completely redacted. Look, I left. Ah, you used number. the wrong picture. That's on me, She's whoever really you staying. are. <laughs> if they figure out who you are, that's my bad. Guys, let her fly home. Okay. Do uh, but yeah, all of the information, because we're like, is this, like, what potential is there for this? And yeah, we could so, change their flight. It's just a confirmation, but again, these are the things that, that are just subconsciously, let's remember that everything's pretty important at this point. So yeah. if you want to stay in Vegas, then you can do that. But yeah, you're awesome. coming to DEF CON. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah, so this, this one, uh, again, another thing that we see a lot of, we're just looking at traffic and we see a lot of clear text stuff come through. One of the things that is a recurring theme show after show after show is people who think that they're doing the right things or in some cases they've done the right things. Stop taking a picture of it. <laughs> Unless you're going to pay his damn mortgage it's off. It's like, That's yeah, you're going to pay his mortgage off? <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> Come on. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. He doesn't owe that much, I know. So let's Venmo, like, since we had to put yeah, it up here right. for him. We're going to start a GoFundMe for this dude's mortgage <laughs> for letting us Come put on. it on a slide. He didn't quite the let scary us, part, did though, it, if, but whatever. Grifter finished his story, I'm the scary sorry. part is he thought he was okay. Yeah, so he thought that everything was fine. We went to the class, we're just like, hey, like, dude, this, like, you are sending a lot of financial information in the clear. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm using a VPN. No, you're not. <laughs> uh, no, I am. I'm connected right now. And I'm like, well, your mortgage, you owe this much. You live at this address. And your password is this. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> um, and so it was like, holy crap. But the client did show that he was connected to VPN. So something's not right there, right? So he believes he's secure, and in fact he wasn't. And he was like, yeah, my kid's in university, I was uploading a bunch of documents for student loans and whatever, and I thought that I was good. I was like, one, don't do that at Black Hat. <laughs> I just gotta, Two, really, really trust your VPN, right? I mean, like, I just got a business know. idea for a new VPN site. <laughs> um, we see things like people will set up their, you know, their client or whatever, and they don't use the kill switch option, so they come into a network like Black Hat, they're on, everything's fine, they've been connected for a while, they drop off, they don't realize that they've disconnected, and they continue to function as normal, and so if there's any traffic they would consider sensitive, they think it's encrypted, in fact it's not. So make sure that you're using your kill switch options. We also see things like people using split tunneling and they think it's happening here, but it's actually, whoops, all that data's going on on the other side. There's a lot of things that happen with VPNs where people think they're secure and they're not. So please, please, please. Trust but verify. Trust but verify. Oh man, we're getting really close. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah. <laughs> this one's, so we've talked about interesting business models when everything kind of changed from ransomware to cryptoware. Well, this is kind of the next evolution. So this is actually a porn site. That's how you know we're getting close to the end. Um, this is actually a porn site. That's not a new business model. <laughs> oh, fair. <laughs> I see what you did there. Ah. So the, uh, there's no ads on this porn site, which is only an amazing thing. And they're actually seemed like they were all pretty long videos. Long. Over 90 Somebody minutes. told us. I don't know what. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. in the background, they One person the knock who has seen things <laughs> that can't be unseen. There's a part of the knock that doesn't have windows. I checked all the videos, not a single ad. No. <laughs> it's market research. So, so basically in the background, they, uh, and this was, <laughs> They just load JavaScript and crypto mine the entire time that you're watching porn. So you don't get ads and they just get their crypto mining done while you do your business. That's fairly dope. I'll take that trade. It was, it was interesting though because we kind of thought about what, how, that is an interesting business model though because you've got a lot of fluctuation, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, well, I know they'll be back every six hours <laughs> for eight minutes. <laughs> Big data, people, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. So, uh, so yeah. Speaking of porn, <laughs> yeah. These are uh, these are just the sessions. So we didn't get too crazy this year. No, uh, no math calculations. You guys are just weird, and we wanted to show that still. And uh, you paid a lot of money to be here. You nasty. <laughs> Somebody does. Yeah. It's like yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, but yeah, so if you don't know some of those sites, now you do. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? People seem to like that one. Um, but yeah, so um, You're weird. We, always talk, yeah, we always talk about the adult content that goes on here where no matter how many shows we go through and we see all these connections to it, we're like, always surprised. Like the only thing that surprises us that we're just like, really? That much? Really? For that long? <laughs> Man, they are mining some Monero. Um, so that's it. Now it's time for questions. And you guys got to have some. There's questions. We had tons of questions in the smaller ones, so you guys have got some time. Somebody's got some. Everybody always runs. You're scared. We just don't want to call them out. Um, all right. Somebody. So how do we inject the captive portals with encryption and stuff? So you have to, you absolutely have to hit an unencrypted site. You won't see it if everything you hit was encrypted at that point. But uh, it's just all done through dynamic user groups at that point on Palo and added to it. So anytime they hit an unencrypted site at that point, we'll get captive portal. Yes, Andy, right? Just a qu quick question about the porn. Uh, <laughs> My dog. Which, uh, which Black Hat show has the, the highest use of porn? I mean, this one, this one. 20,000 weirdos. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, like, per capita, I don't, now per I capita. need to know. <laughs> so, we can start some new calculations yeah. now. Again. <laughs> Is it one guy? I, you tell us. It's one super sweaty dude. <laughs> <laughs> you saw him. He looked dehydrated as all hell. <laughs> Do you have a question or are you saying it was you? This is going off the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, there's somebody at the mic. Go ahead. Uh, have you guys seen any uptake in encrypted DNS technology? I couldn't understand. Can I say that one more time? Yeah. Did you, did you see any uptake in encrypted DNS technology? Like, yeah, that's uh, usually when they're running away with your data. <laughs> uh, I don't think we actually see tons of encrypted DNS yet. No. No. No, no, no not here. Sorry. Oh, um, no, we didn't this year. We, yeah, we didn't deploy any honeypots this year. No, we didn't. Let we me, did not. We've done it in the past, but it was like WordPress on a... I'm going to be honest with you. I forgot. I you just we, said it, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody touched it. Yeah, but nobody I mean, touched if I saw a WordPress year, site at Black Hat, I wouldn't touch yeah. it either. It's probably... Go ahead. I forgot. 
Yeah, you talked about segmentation. I'm curious what you do, how far you take it uh, to protect the uh, labs against each other. So, so we had an interesting question about this earlier and, and, and to the extent that again it's just simple basic VLANing as far as that goes, host isolation on the wireless. Uh, basically again we control all of the distribution layer as well. Um, we do VLAN people so in the classrooms there's no host isolation on their SSID. They can talk to each other and then still have wired infrastructure as well and be within that same. Uh, but then everything else outside of trainings there is nobody that will talk to anybody else as far as, as we go there. But everything's basic. There's nothing super super advanced as far as that goes, like features with, with anything outside of uh, VLANing at this point. Go ahead. Uh, for configuration, how do you configure all the network equipment? Do you do how it manually? For configuration, is that what you said? Yeah. How do we configure it? Mm. I mean, I, the, like the audio Slow. is really bad. It's super echoey in here, so. How do we configure the equipment, right? Right. While we're on site, basically. So, myself and a small skeleton crew, Fink, and a bunch of the partners show up last Tuesday, basically. And even there was even more. Some of the switch guys were here on last Monday uh, getting that put in. Basically, we work starting in about February designing this together with all the partners. Uh, configuration is done in some sense uh, beforehand, but a lot of it's done here because everything changes, anyways. But the, uh, okay, follow up question. So one question at a time. Okay, sorry. yeah, you get one question. Get it, sit down. Get out of here. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> He's mind. gonna walk away. He's scared. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, uh, no, what I mean, do you log into every equipment and uh, push the configuration there, or do you do it from one machine? Um, no, they're, they're we're pushed. We don't manage. There is some management for Palo Alto, but there's no central management for the switches. Thanks. So you said you swap out all the infrastructure here. Mm -hmm. No, just the, just the convention center where we are, we take over what we need. And as far as that goes, their equipment's still there, obviously. We just patch out and, and deal with what we have to. This side of the room isn't asking questions, hang on, anybody? Yeah, we don't unrack their stuff. Right, that go would ahead. be ridiculous. I'm, I'm not very strong. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, a little bit louder. What's that? Successful attacks? Were you trying something? Yeah. <laughs> Do you need to like disclose something right now? Or? Um, no, there's nothing that I can say as far as this. It, it, it's kind of hard to say what a successful attack. I mean, there was plenty of labs that were popping boxes, you know, training classes, but uh, on our infrastructure and such, no. Yeah, I think I wouldn't the thing tell that, you here anyway. I'd have been crying in my room already if that was the case. Yeah, the thing that annoys annoys us, you know, really, <laughs> what I would consider successful to a degree is just like when people are dropping like you know hardware deauthors and planters and stuff like that. That's there's always cool. random stuff. Yeah, we it's like oh people, crap, we have to go take a look at that. We had some some deauth issues this year as well, but nothing too crazy. We actually had one that wasn't even it wasn't intentional. Like the guy's internal wireless wasn't working in his laptop, and so the instructors gave him some janky ass like $15 adapter. That Chinese adapter? In. Yeah, and it was just like nah! It broke it. And like it was like we had to send somebody to go like they literally hunting him like pointing antennas in rooms. <laughs> like someone was like a dude came in our room and like pointed a directional <laughs> antenna around and then left. And we're like yeah it's alright. Just Jim. He's whoo. Go ahead. <laughs> So as far as the data when we're done, everything gets wiped here and uh, I mean RSA is actually already pulling if I'm correct and that data is completely wiped. There is nothing that is kept from the show. So this is, everything is, is uh, logged to disk during the show but as soon as every show ends we, we wipe all that data. It's our data too so we've talked about that a little bit before and we don't, we don't want that done for research but we'll laugh at you while we're here. Yeah we like legitimately like people will be like oh we'll give you money if you'll let us see that data, nope. that's a gold mine of data, and we're like, suck it. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you want a new porn site, maybe. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you one guy's data. <laughs> Sweaty guy! <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you said you did a manual approval on the captive portal. What was the false positive rate? Uh, so I wouldn't even say that there's a huge false positive rate that we were measuring. It was more of a, uh, Pri not even privacy. Again, we don't want to scare you guys away. So we didn't want those blasting out uh, if it could have been a false positive. So for example, if all of a sudden a list of 5,000 users or something got added to that list and it just automated all the way through, we wouldn't be able to say, whoa, that looks a little weird. So we get an email, like a digest of that and can just basically respond. It's just 
that stop in the chain, basically, to make sure that everything's good. Uh, but I wouldn't say that we had any, I, I don't know of any false positives as far as that went. Nobody came complained to us, at least. So again, it's more, it's informational. Like, we're not stopping anything or doing whatever. We're just like, hey, here's a notification. I, I had one in at, at the London show where a guy sent me back an email. He sent it to knock at blackhat.com, uh, which goes to, I think, Bart Fink and I, right? And so if you're looking for a date, <laughs> knock at blackhat. Uh, talking to you, sir. Um, you know, the, uh, so it, it, that, that just goes out. And I had somebody come back and say, oh, I don't think that this is actually what's happening. And I was like, well, hold on. And I'll grab a screenshot of the traffic and whatever. And, we, and I sent it back to him. I said, here's your traffic. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's actually I think that's something that I'm doing with like a, I'm like, all right, well, fine. So it looked false positive. It was something he intended to be taking place on his machine. Um, but we haven't had people come into the knock like banging on the glass, uh, like, you're wrong, knock. I don't have a crypto miner on there. Like, I'm, I'm, and if you were legitimately crypto mining, that's fine. Again, it's just informational. Yeah. We just wanted to make people more aware because that's obviously the new wave of infection, yeah. if you will, so. And Dogecoin's not gonna mine itself. Uh, the question's more, uh, when did you guys not, or hit no and not let it get sent to someone? I haven't yet. No, never. I always hit yes, and here's why. Again, that check is really only in there so that if I get an email at like one hour where all of a sudden there are 4,000 entries that I'm like, no, right? And then we'll um, just look deeper. It's just a check for us to say like, you know, it's Nothing not malfunctioning, haywire. essentially. We're still nervous, it's only been a year. You hit no, think hit no, because one of them was him. <laughs> That's what he says. He just said it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Oh, he didn't actually hit someone. I was just joking. He we was like, why did Alan hit the guy? I didn't actually hit somebody, no. I was like, they were just ready for a fight at any given moment. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, those poor guys, they earned their money this week. They earned the hell out of it. Anybody else? Oh. Say again? Rogue APs? So again, um, well, we have ruckus. Like, so they're monitoring for, for things like that. We also have Crazy Jim. Um, so if we see something and we need to investigate, then we'll just go out and, and take care of it. We have seen plenty of those in the past, yeah. for sure. There wasn't many this year. Anything? Um, we haven't got into, like, as far as triangulation kind so of stuff. So you're saying, like, obviously, the question is, do we use Wi-Fi for positioning or, like, uh, we, we don't do that. Kind of. Um, we didn't. But if you guys are familiar with the Wi-Fi cactus, you've seen the Wi-Fi cactus for the last couple of years sitting in the knock. Actually, if you poked your head into the knock this year, the Wi-Fi cactus wasn't there, but the Wi-Fi Kraken was, which is a new project by Mike Spicer or Dark Matter who did the Wi-Fi cactus. He collected data from the last three years of black hats wandering around passively scanning um, and the last three DEF CONs, and he'll be speaking at DEF CON about all the analytics that he's done, including positioning. Um, like he's on the main stage uh, at DEF CON, I want to say Saturday. So if you're interested in seeing when, he says Friday. Friday? What time? Four. At four o'clock. So not Is that a four or a five? Your thumb is broken, is it? A what are those? No, I don't <laughs> know. Is it baseball? I can't sports. I have no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. It's been an amazing year.